Now that we know what a variable is, after we've discussed it and looked at the different kinds of variables, now we're going to look at something a little bit more practical, how we can use this in a simple program. So we're going to write a program that makes two different parts just by changing a few variables at the beginning of the program. So let's have a look at this push program. Diameters A and B change between parts 1 and parts 2. So we're going to write one program where we can change just two variables to make two different parts. So here's our program to make the part. I'm going to go through and highlight each section as I explain what happens as we read through it. Now this first section is where we define our variables. Now I'm using three different variables for this particular component. We have our two diameters, diameter A and diameter B. And we also have our stock bar size. It's quite often bar comes in at the wrong size on a lathe. So by defining our stock bar size at the beginning of the program, we can easily adjust our rapid distance on the X axis by changing this value. So our first line of code is hash 101 equals 35 millimeters. This is our larger diameter of part one of our bush. Our second variable is hash 102, and this equals 20 millimeters. This is our smaller diameter, or diameter B, of part one of our bush. Adding an operator's note, our note in brackets, after our line of code, is a big help when we're defining variables. Because hash 101 doesn't really describe our variable too well, so at least this way we can reference what it means at a later date. Now our final variable is our stock bar diameter size. I'm defining this with hash 103. And the current bar size diameter we are working with is 50 millimeters. Using this technique when we're programming multiple parts means all we have to do is change these two values here to change the size of the part. It's much quicker than writing separate programs for each individual component. Now we're going to go through the program so you can see how this works. Now I'm going to have to assume that you already understand the basic parts of how we set up a turning program on a lathe. If not, please refer back to my other course, CNC Programming a Lathe Using G-Code. This section of program just tells the machine what tools we're going to use to do a tool change and to set the speeds of that tool. Now as we rapid the tool in to our X dimension, I've used a variable here. Because we're doing maths within the variable, this has to be contained within brackets. So for our X diameter, we use hash 103 plus 3 millimeters. But the 103 plus 3 millimeters is always in brackets, with the X defining the axes outside the brackets. So what we're doing here is we're telling the tool to come in to our stock bar diameter of 50 millimeters. This is contained within the variable hash 103. The hash 103 plus 3 tells the machine to add 3 millimeters to that. I've done this in case the bar is not running true and we don't really wish to wrap it at all straight down to bar size. So this plus 3 millimeters now brings it down to x 53 millimeters. I'm taking the front right hand face of the component as z0. So z 5 millimeters brings our tool 5 millimeters off the face of the component. And of course, MO8 turns on our coolant. Using this block of code here, we're simply facing off the end of our stock bar. Once we've finished facing off, we can wrap it back up to our stock bar diameter. Again, we're using X, and then in brackets, hash 103 plus 1. Now the plus 1 this time is because I only wish to come up to 51 mil off our face. I don't wish to wrap it right back to 3 mil above our stock bar diameter. So we're still doing a small equation within the program. When we do equations, it's always in brackets. These two lines of code here define our roughing cycle that we're using. The P100Q200 values define our subroutine that follows. When using a roughing subroutine, we only need to program the profile of the part. We don't need to program each individual cut. Now at the front of this particular pin or bush or whatever you wish to call this part, 
I want to add a small break edge, which is a little chamfer that just stops any burrs on the edge. So to do this, I'm coming down one millimeter past the outside of the component diameter so we can come up and machine a chamfer. So to do this, we use X hash 102 and then we minus one millimeter from it. Again, where we're doing maths with our variable, we have to enclose this within brackets. On this line of code, I'm just feasing in the tool to the front face of the material so we can machine our chamfer. The Z tells the machine we're moving half a millimetre towards the chuck or the spindle and our X dimension here is our dimension of diameter B. Now, we don't need to enclose this in brackets because we're not adding or subtracting from this number. We're simply stating we need to go to the number declared by this variable. Z minus 15 just cuts along our diameter B until the end point where the shoulder is. So to bring our tool up to the larger diameter of A, we just need to say X hash 101. This calls upon our variable to bring it up to 35 millimeter diameter. Again, we don't need to use brackets here because there's no maths involved in this equation. We're just stating to move to a variable position. We follow that by cutting along to the end of our part. I've gone five millimeters past the length of the part. This allows for the parting off tool to come in and have a nice clean cut as it starts to part off. For our final line of this subroutine, we start with our end number. This is how we can tell the machine where the final line is. Our G40 cancels cutter compensation. And here we have another variable coming into play. The DX hash 101 plus five. This tells the machine to go to the variable 101, which is 35 millimeters and add five millimeters to it to give us plenty of clearance away from the part as we wrap it to Z plus five millimeters. This is five millimeters to the right of the face of our component. Now finally, we take the machine back to its home position, turn off the coolant, stop the spindle and add an optional stop. So in case the operator needs to check anything at this point. So that's the program written for part one. Now to make our second part, all we need to do is change the numbers of these variables to match part two. And the whole program will change to make a part with different dimensions. And that is how we can use one program to make an entire family of parts. We can add lots and lots of parts with different dimensions, even Z lengths, and just issue different variables to make the part. And then it's just a simple case of changing the variable.